Today we're going to be finding the perimeter of basic figures on the coordinate plane. What I mean by basic figures, we're going to be talking about triangles, rectangles, and squares. So to find the perimeter, that's pretty much just finding the distance around a figure. So that's where we're going to be adding all of the sides up of a triangle. Okay. Now we have just a few steps on how we find perimeter on the coordinate plane. We're actually going to be on the grid and we're going to be looking to see how we can find the perimeter of a shape. So first we want to find the lengths of the sides. So we identify our sides and then we measure all of the sides. If we have a diagonal line, however, we can't just count how many boxes or how many units. Um, we can either write the coordinates and use the distance formula like we did in our previous video, or we can build that right triangle and then use the modified version of that distance formula through the Pythagorean theorem and find the base and the height, square them, add them, and then take the square root of them. Okay. Once we find all of the lengths of all of our sides, then of course we add all of our sides together and don't forget to write the units you're using. Because we're on the coordinate plane, we know that we're only going to be using units. So let's get started. So we have our first shape here and we want to find the perimeter. Perimeter just means the outside of that figure. Okay. So I've already written down the line segments. So I have segment JK, segment JKL, segment LM, and segment MJ. And I want to know how many units long they are. Okay. So I've kind of written a little key up here and all I'm going to do is fill in these blanks. So I count from J to K because this is a vertical line I can easily count the boxes. So there's one box and two box. That's two units. Sorry at the number two. From K to L there's only one unit. From L to M there's only one two units. And from M to J, there's only one unit. So two units, one unit, two units, one unit. Now all we have to do is add all of those lengths together to get our total perimeter. So two plus one plus two plus one. So the perimeter of figure J, K, L, M is equal to 2, 3, 5, and then 6 units. Not too bad, right? Okay. Just have a few more for you. Let's try the next one. We have to find the perimeter of this triangle. So, again, if I can count my sides, then do that. Okay. If you can't count them, if they're diagonals, then we have to do something special with them. Okay. So as you can see, segment IJ and segment JK are horizontal and vertical segments. So those I can easily count. So let's tackle those first. I know that segment IJ is one, two units long. So for IJ here, I'm going to write two. K, I count from J to K, one, two, three, four, five units. And now KI, I really can't count how many boxes, how many units. So these are the types of segments or sides where you should build the right triangle or if you want to use the distance formula, you may. I feel that creating that right triangle helps us find that base and that height quite easily and then we can use that modified version of the Pythagorean theorem. So for this particular triangle I have a base of 2 and a height of 5. So I'm going to use my distance formula to find what Ki is. So I'm going to actually identify this as Ki and I'm going to take the square root of the base squared, so 2 squared, plus the height squared, 5 squared. 
When I do that, 2 times itself is 4, 5 times itself is 25, and when I add these together, I get 29. Now with your calculator, just like we did in our previous videos, we're going to take the square root of 29. So with my calculator handy, I'm going to type in second x squared to get my square root symbol. Now I need 29 and I get 5.385, etc. So I went around to the nearest tenth, so I'm looking at the 3. I'm going to check out its neighbor. Neighbor is higher than that 5, so I need to bump 3 up by 1. So this is going to turn into a 5.4. So segment KI is going to be 5.4 units. That's great. So now that we have all three sides together, now we can add them. So we're going to add the 2, the 5, and the 5.4. If you need to use your calculator, please use that. If not, if you don't have a calculator, you can line these up. This is a 5.4. This would be a 5.0. This would be a 2.0. Making sure to line up those decimals when you add, okay? And that's going to give me a 12.4. So perimeter of IJK is going to be 12.4 units. Nice work, guys. And remember, you pause the video at any time so that you go at your own pace. Okay, I have a last one for you. Here we have a square. But this square is slanted, so they shifted it. It's a little rotated. And it's not very easy to just find the lengths of those sides by counting up, down, or left, right. So we have to build those little triangles to help us find the length of my diagonal. Okay? So let's take a look. If I build a little triangle here, I know I'm going to get a 1 by 1 two, three, four, five, one by five. You see that? Now, if I try to build a little triangle on this side, it's going to be a one and then one, two, three, four, a one by five also. You see that? And for this diagonal, if I try to build one of those little triangles, I'm going to get a one by one, two, three, four, five, also a one by five. You see that? And for this diagonal here, if I draw a little triangle, I'm going to get also a 1 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, my question is, do I have to do distance formula four times if I have the same triangle every single time? Well, no, that would be very silly and that would be us wasting a lot of time. So, because all of these triangles we've created to find the lengths of the sides are the same, then that's going to mean that all of these sides are going to be the same length. So I only have to do it one time. So I'm going to go with QR, which is right here. So I'm going to say QR, and now I'm going to take the square root of the base squared times the height squared. So that's going to be 1 squared plus 5 squared. I know 1 times 1 is 1, and I know 5 times itself is 25. And when I add those together, I get 26. So now, with my calculator, I have to find out what the square root of 26 is. So I'm going to hit second, the x squared to get my square root sign, type in 26, and now I'm going to get a 5.0990. Remember, we are rounding to the nearest tenth, so i got to look at the neighbor. This guy is way past that 5, so I get to bump this 0 to a 1. So this turns into a 5.1. That means QR is 5.1 units. So if QR is 5.1 units and RS has the same triangle, that leads me to conclude that it's also going to be 5.1, just like this one will be 5.1 and just like this one will be 5.1 because we have a square. So now all we have to do is add 
all of the sites together. So if you have a calculator, go on ahead and use it. I'm going to pretend I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to add them all together like this. Okay? So I know 5, 10, 15, 20, 20.4. 20 or, because I have 5.14 times, you could have multiplied. And this would have given you the same thing. Okay? So the perimeter of figure QRST is 20.4 units. Okay? Well, I hope that kind of helped you a little better on how to find the perimeter of an object and how to find the length of that diagonal using that modified version of the Pythagorean theorem. Until next time.